with those pictures of the Charles River, Eric? Like, we should all get outside. It's pretty good, no question about that. And uh, the only thing this year, I mean, I feel like a lot of these days, people have been watching outside the office window and then just trying to soak it in as much as possible in the evening. Hopefully you're able to do that tonight. Our 11th day this month, over 80 degrees. That's exceptional in Boston for the month of May. Records moved to Logan Airport right on the water in 1936. And so since that happened, only one other year had more 80-degree days. That was in 1977. So here's a look at the rankings before today's data is entered in across southern New England for the month. I think Boston will move to the 10th warmest, Providence the 3rd warmest, Worcester should get to the 9th spot, and Hartford, Connecticut, the 4th warmest May on record. Very warm out there tonight, 70s and 80s. In fact, we look to the west and everywhere is warm. And if you look at the country as a whole, this preliminarily is the hottest May on record. It took down a record that stood since the Dust Bowl, 1934, which featured incredible heat across the middle of the nation in particular. Out there tonight, you see the cloud bank that's starting to move in from western New England. It'll be a gradual process. Should be a nice evening out there, but the humidity is moving up. You might want to use the air conditioner tonight because that humidity will just climb as we move toward tomorrow morning. And temps will stay in the 60s. Now, tomorrow we wake up to low clouds, some patchy fog, and a chance for a quick passing shower or downpour during the first half of the day. Then I think we can get at least some breaks of afternoon sunshine and evening sunshine, but there's really not a big trigger to get these storms fired up in the afternoon. So I'd say a slight chance of a pop-up downpour as we look toward tomorrow evening, especially for areas farther off toward the west. So the general idea is that each part of the day brings a slight chance for a passing downpour, but more towns are going to stay dry than get hit by any of that rain. Cloudy in the morning, mostly cloudy at midday, very tropical outside, bad hair day. And then in the afternoon, we should get into the low 80s, an isolated downpour and a southwest wind for tomorrow. So a little bit of sunshine, we see some 80s from Boston north and west. We should keep more cloud cover toward the south coast in the 60s to low 70s, but still very humid there. Not the best beach day because of the cloud cover, but it certainly will be warm outside. And that humidity is something we haven't had all that much so far this season. Saturday, it's all about the timing of a front that's going to drop down through the area during the morning and could bring some scattered showers and rumbles. I think the highest chance for a pop of shower storms across central Massachusetts and then down toward Connecticut. Points south and west have the highest risk for a bit of rain. We'll be bringing in drier and cooler air from the northeast as the afternoon goes on. I think the afternoon and the evening are look pretty good. Then on Sunday, we've got a cool onshore breeze. It's cool, but it's dry with partial sunshine and the humidity will go down. So tomorrow, very tropical dew points near 70. Tomorrow night is humid. Saturday morning is humid. And then we'll see those dew points really drop off in the afternoon and evening. Saturday Saturday highs in the 70s compared to some of our previous weekends. It's actually looking pretty good out there. And then on Sunday, we're looking at upper 50s to low 60s for high temperatures. Warmest away from the water, cooler at the coastline. I guess you could call it a comfortable day, and it will be dry for any activities outdoors. Next week looks pretty wet and pretty cool. Onshore winds, 50s, and chances for rain, especially on Monday. David and Lisa, back to you. All right, Eric, appreciate it. The only